this video, I will show you how to program an Infusion 360 for the Omax Protomax Waterjet cutter. To check and make sure we have our 3D solid model. It doesn't have to be the exact thickness that you're actually going to cut your part out. It really doesn't matter. That's taken care of on the machine out in the shop as far as the material thickness and how long it takes to cut that thicker material. But we do want to make sure that our part is one solid piece. And we've already checked that it's the correct size. And we go into cam, setup, operation type is going to be cutting, our stock work coordinate system point is going to be based off of the stock box point of the bottom left top corner. X to the right, Y away, Z up. Our stock is going to be relative size box. We're going to have 40 thousandths on the outside and no additional stock on the top. Post process, this is going to be the program name. I'm going to do comment. I'm going to do the material thickness for the comment. And we'll leave this as 0 for our G54. Click OK. I'm going to do a cutting operation. First thing, select our tool. We're going to use the water jet tool type that's in the samples. So we're going to use the 21 thousandths water jet. Click OK. Our cutting mode is going to be through. We could probably go low quality on this part. It's just a simple keychain. We're not going to worry about our feed rate. That's taken care of in the Protomax software. Geometry is going to be this top selection. Puts all our arrows on the right side. Heights, we don't have to ever worry about this on the Protomax. Passes this as default is just fine. And our lead in and lead out. So we're just going to hit OK. Get a toolpath. See what it looks like. As you see, we have our lead in entry at 60 degrees and then our cutting path. And if we look closely, we notice we do not have a lead in right here or here. And we also have this error message saying that one or more passes were discarded due to linking constraints. That's basically saying that these lead in legs are too big to fit inside of this geometry. So we need to go in and modify our, modify our lead ins and lead outs. Right click, edit, linking. Our lead in distance is going to be 0 0.05, a little bit bigger than the actual kerf width of the water jet, which is about 30 thousandths. Click OK. Don't try to make too many changes at once. And now we are looking for our lead ins there, 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 there. If we run a quick little simulation, turn off my model, turn on my stock. You can see it does cut out the part, but there are a few little errors. We can see our lead in right here is actually gouging our part. So we now need to position those lead ins where we want them. Edit. It's going to be under passes. Nope, excuse me. Linking entry positions. We want. I'm just going to do all. We're going to start there. We'll do a lead in there, 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 and there. And then the final one, right there. Click OK.
simulate. Now see that our lead-ins are not touching our part. That looks kind of weird. Why that's at an angle? Very weird. I have no idea why our toolpath would be diagonal right there when it should be a straight line. That is weird because if we look at our model and close that, we obviously have a straight line. It is doing something. Tool path looks straight. Notice it kind of chopped that off. It can't get in that really tight corner. For this keychain, it'll probably be fine. You could also go back into model and maybe do a quick little create modify fillet. You go ahead and Fill it all these little inside edges, outside edges of a radius of 0 0.02. A little bit bigger than our curve of our water jet. Go back into cam. Edit. Regenerate our toolpath. Lead in still look good. Simulate. Fast forward to the end. That looks better. So I guess that's the solution. I don't know why I would try to go off at a diagonal, but we can't cut a sharp corner anyway with the water jet. We might as well do a blue little bit of a radius. And we actually zoom out. This keychain is going to be about this big anyway, so it's really not even negligible. It doesn't really matter that much as far as what those radiuses actually are. They're so small. Okay, so our simulation is good. As far as verification, we need to make sure our coordinate system is in the bottom left corner. And our lead ins are good, our entry positions are good. It's going to do the inside cuts first. What we also need to do is add a tab so this piece doesn't drop down in the tank and is still kind of connected to our stock material. So right click, edit, under geometry, we're going to do tab. And we want our tabs usually to be by points because I want it at a very specific spot. I'm going to put my tab right here at the end of that section of the part. And then the tab width, usually don't go less than 50 thousandths, I'm going to do 0 0.06, 60 thousandths, and that will oh, make sure your toolpath is completely generated before simulating. Okay. And you can see, well, let me get rid of the tool, you can see that we have our tab left on to hold our part and we'll break that off sand it and we'll be good to go the final step is going to be post processing we are not using a cloud post this post processor is inside of the built-in fusion default so we need to go to the setup we need to go to installed post library Give it some time, it's reading 106 posts. Drop down menu, we want the OMAX water jet. We got our file name, comment, all this stuff is fine. Click post. Save it on your desktop or your flash drive.
and the G code for the OMAX or the file that gets read in the make software looks very different than anything made for the mills or routers or plasma cutter. Click close and that is it in Autodesk Fusion 360 for programming your flat 2D sheet metal part or composite part or wood or plastic or basically anything that can get cut on the water jet.